Live from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in New York City here at the Big Data NYC event put on by SiliconANGLE and Wikibon on theCUBE in conjunction with Strata and Hadoop. We're 100 yards from the Javits Center up West 37th Street, right next to the Javits, where all the big data actions happening. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm excited for this next segment. Uh, has to do with healthcare, and uh, we have EMC here. We have uh, Chris Harold, uh, Global Field CTO from EMC, and John Jackson, Scientific Computing Services Manager, Partners Healthcare in Boston, which is a very innovative organization. All the hospitals kind of pulled together under one big organization. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thank you. Much. Appreciate it. Partners Healthcare, really known for its uh, innovation, um, specifically in getting operational efficiencies around all the different distinct hospitals expertise, uh, which is a challenge I know in the Boston area, but to pull it off from an IT standpoint and then value is a really big deal. And, and, and excited to hear what you guys are talking about with, with respect to the big data, especially with making things real time. So first, John, I got to ask you, what are some of the innovation kind of concepts that you guys are working under? Because big data is one of those things where everyone just waves their hand, yeah, we, got, we need big data. Mm -hmm. we're, we're healthcare. We're going to have real-time information, it's like the alerts going off on the devices, you need people's health set at risk. What are some of the technical things that you guys are doing with the innovation? So the, um, the Partners Healthcare Research Computing Group has been providing services for many, many years to that community to really make it excel, allow them to excel in, in, in research. And um, we've been providing so computational services, platforms, software, but also data, um, taking that medical records data, packaging it in an easy to consume way so you can discover your cohort and go away and do great research. But it's been somewhat siloed and the, and the trends today with the increasing amounts of data um, is that really to bring it all into one place is, is critical to leverage the value. So I just want to say to the folks watching, just a disclaimer, um, John's comments reflect his own opinions, not that of Partners Healthcare get that out of the way. But I'm sure it's, it is a great proxy, in my opinion, for what you're seeing out there. So I'll get your expert opinion. Just in the general, you know, you see the keynotes, oh, healthcare. It seems to be a nice gl glimmer and a nice gimmick to throw on keynotes because people can relate to healthcare. Mm -hmm. But there's some serious issues going on with healthcare because there's compliance, you got HIPAA, you got privacy, but speed of data and integrating data sets is a huge issue on the services side. Then on the research side, from genome to other really cutting edge research, you need horsepower, you need cloud, you need compu computation. Right. So talk about that, Damon. What are some of the things that you guys are doing that's exciting that you'd like to share and the things that you're interested in? So exactly, so people are coming to us with all kinds of interesting projects and, and they've been hitting the limits of performance in, in kind of you know the traditional either HPC or a large machine and they're wanting an analytics platform that can scale not just to like 5,000 records but to a million records. So whether it's predicting um, what someone's going to need when they arrive at, at the emergency room or whether it's predicting you know, what is the best treatment for this individual based on all of you know all of the records and the information that we have in our system going back 20 years. Um, it's all about, so we're, we're, what we're looking at today is really you know, the, Hadoop, the Hadoop platform, uh, Pivotal, Hawk, these big data technologies, Spark, that can really facilitate analytics on that massive scale and um, bringing the information into one place. Um, so uh, huge for us right now is the genome information because it's, it's got to the point where it's economical to acquire your DNA when you, you know, come through the hospital and Mass General is doing that. And so, we have DNA information, we have medical record information, um, and, and all of the other research data sources that can be queried and building, people are building models to try to use that for you know, the individual when they, when they present um, in, a, in a doctor's office. And that's really exciting. But you need the speed to deliver that analytics quickly because um, you know, this is, uh, it's, real, it's real time. Chris, you work for EMC, which is storage vendor, so you have the big iron storage, which yep. stores everything. You have a part of EMC now, which is cutting edge, but your role as a data scientist and you're in the analytics side, mm -hmm. this is now the cutting edge or bleeding edge. That's where the value is, yep. and that we're seeing here in theCUBE, but EMC obviously positioned for that. Um, 
what do you see in, in terms of this? And what are these guys doing that's unique? What would you share? Yeah, I mean, you know, fundamentally, I think, um, you know, and I, I spent some time with John last week just catching up before we uh, came out here. And, you know, he, he hit on something that I think is, is pretty consistent across all of our customers right now, which is we understand the value big data has to happen. We, we get that. We need it to be faster. We need it to be simpler, mm -hmm. right? And we need it to be secured. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a, a point that John made to me last week that, you know, really resonates with everybody that we talk to. It's why we've, we're building the solution set that we are around, the, you know, sort of the Federation of, of Technologies of EMC uh, and our, our Federation platform, right? And so for a long time, I think, you know, people had this impression that EMC equals big giant boxes of disks, right? Like that was our, that was, that was what we did. And we've really, as, a, as an organization, kind of gotten out in front of this big data wave now with a, a solution set and a, and a grouping of technologies and products through uh, certainly you know, Pivotal Labs, but our ETD division with Isilon and ECS and those type of technologies that enable that massive scale, rapid ingest, you know, scalable storage, scalable compute, sort of exactly the things that John hit on that we're, that we're trying to address in the broader market. And I think the piece that we were missing that we're really focused on now is wrapping that all up in a platform that allows you to deliver in a governed and managed way, right? And so we hear a lot about the, you know, sort of the wild west that is the analytics space, right? And we're really trying to tame that in with a set of solutions that wraps that all up. And I think that's where, you know, all of our customers get it. All of our customers understand the importance of it. Yeah. It's really, it's the gap is, I understand make this reality for me, make, you know, show me how to actually stand this up mm -hmm. and do this thing, because there's just so many options and so many technologies and so much complexity. I got to ask you guys, I want you to comment on a, on a concept that we've been kicking around the cube this week, and which is kind of an accumulation of most of our interviews, and that is, is that you know, the, the systems of record, systems of engagement, we've heard that stuff, and we see the systems of intelligence coming out from Wikibon now, which is, mm -hmm. takes us to a whole other realm. Systems of record, pretty straightforward, database stuff. You can be familiar with that. You have all this stuff, you know, structured databases. Systems of engagement really is the interactive piece. Applications using data, we're seeing that heavily with SQL on Hadoop, getting the rest of the data into memory with Flash. So mm -hmm. under the hood, there's some stuff there. But when you start to get into systems of intelligence, it opens up algorithmic and machine learning concepts. I got to ask you to comment on the following concept. Humans, whether they're touching devices or working at a certain speed, call it you know, 100 milliseconds, your brain. See something on the screen, you're a doctor, you hit this, give me that. So kind of the recommendation engine mm -hmm. side of data science, mm -hmm. that's the speed of a human. Right. When you get into systems of intelligence, the speed of machines is 10x or more faster than any human can think, right? So now we're in that wearables, internet of things. So I wanted you guys to comment, and add some color and some vision around, if machine learning and other things are happening, how do the machines do the work for the humans if the speed is greater, then it's going to put pressure on the software mm -hmm. and the analytics, because the analytics is where the value is, this new systems of intelligence becomes critical. Mm -hmm. So what's your thoughts on that? Can you just share your, your, uh, what you hear from customers? Is this, uh, is this too out on the fringe? Is it ble too bleeding edge? Are you seeing this systems of intelligent code coming in? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously visualization helps see it for humans, but like when machines are processing streams mm -hmm. at massive velocity, there's work that can be done there, so opportunities. Right. Yeah. At the Absolutely. same time, what the hell's the technology that does it? Is it just machine learning? Is it streaming? Is it flow in the flow? It probably won't even hit a database. Yeah. Um, so a concept that gets thrown around is clinical decision support. So we don't see the machines replacing the doctor, but to be able to pass a whole lot of information and, and, and give um, color to all the various options available. Um, Using using sort of all of the records going back is a tremendous value, and there's a lot of uh, digital pathology is an area where is really exciting. So um, there, we, there's been research studies that have shown um, greater specificity w with machine learning applied to detecting you know what what is going on in in, in those past lives, uh, and that, that was that was really exciting sort of concept, but what if we apply that to all of the other diseases? Um, can we get greater specificity um, through, uh, through machine learning? But, but more, more so, can we just reduce the amount of time that it takes to process 
can we, can we um, you know. Yeah. It's kind of like when you walk into an emergency room, you hear all these beeps going off. If there's exactly. so many beeps and notifications going off, at some point, it's like, what do you pay attention to? Right. Do, do the humans have the ability to know that right. that little nuanced beep is different, someone's dying? So like, mm -hmm. that's the notification economy problem that we Absolutely. see with intelligence. Do you agree? Exactly, that, and the, the emergency room, things are moving so quickly. The sooner you can um, predict what medication that person's going to need or how, how much time they'll need to have care in the emergency room, all of these things can make you know, care more streamlined, improve care for the patients. Yeah. So we think there's a, you know, a huge yeah. opportunity. Okay, so if we buy the thesis then, the intelligence systems a la machines and algorithms, software, mm -hmm. is going to augment the human component which has some finite millisecond right. time right. situation. So now there's a user interface question. So right. back to Chris, your thoughts on analytics, dashboarding. So assume that they're working together and they don't replace each other. I right. mean, one doesn't replace the other. Yeah, I mean, you can argue that some jobs may go away, but they'll, they'll yeah. shift. Dave, Dave yeah. Vellante talks about this all the time. Yeah. New values we create. So what is going to happen on the analytics side? What do you expect to see? Because again, on the dashboarding side, you know, I talk to customers all the time I hear, I, just, I need another dashboard like a hole in the head. Right. It's right. like, I need better dashboard. Yeah, I, I think, you know, and I think really where people are trying to take this, and it's something that, um, that we focus on quite a bit within, within our solutions organization, just CMC as a whole. Um, you know, dashboards, PowerPoints, I, I generate these great insights, I find, I find a result. Copying and pasting in PowerPoint is where insight goes mm -hmm. to die, right? So I, I need to actually drive an action with it. I need to create a result, I need to do something. And dashboards aren't good enough anymore because the expectation is that there's literally somebody sitting there watching the dashboard all the time and that's just not the information economy of today. Right, I need, I need something to pop up on my phone. I need real time, I need alerting, yeah. I need whatever mm -hmm. it is. And so really having those data-driven applications directly integrated into the platform, that's, that's where people are taking this, right? So and I got my iWatch here, so yep. notification could be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The wearables. Exactly right. This is where the it's, smartphones yeah, and falls it's, to IoT, right? It's exactly right, it's just a, it is a feedback loop. And when we talk about Internet of Things, the, the connotation of thing is a watch or a sensor in a car or a, or a, a pacemaker monitor or, mm -hmm. or something else that's that's a that's a digital thing but we're we're things right and we create our own sets of data as well and my interaction with a patient mm -hmm. as a doctor to to John's point earlier that's that is that's real time records and if i make a note or i update a field in that patient's record and suddenly it invalidates an entire course of treatment because of uh, an allergic potential or, or something like that, that's, that's that real-time data that we right. need to really influence that outcome. And that interaction has to be happening at the point of entry, not later on in a dashboard when I pull up a report about this patient and realize, oh no, I sent them home with a prescription that's no good for them. Literally, when I click that button, I need to know right now. So innovation we, on dashboarding clearly is not going away. That's going to be continue certainly. to be a trend. Yep. We envision, um, reports of the same format that a doctor is accustomed to being embedded in the medical record system. Exactly. So they can go to they can go to an application that's embedded, they can call up a report and it'll, the analytics will take place on the back end on the data lake. Uh, the results get returned and it's right there presented to the doctor in that in that framework that he's 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 working in, he or she's working in. So I got I want to shift gears to some of the <coughs> things that we've seen in uh, Hadoop. Mm -hmm. So the theme we've been seeing is Hadoop Next, which thank God we finally got there. <laughs> Abstraction layer on top of Hadoop. Certainly, you know, we're bullish on Hadoop. We've always said it's relevant, mm -hmm. but it should be invisible, but the ecosystem is filling in around it. You see the big whales coming in yep. like EMC, yep. IBM, HP, among others. So the vendors are coming in because they have big solution sets that it's not used exclusive. So the shift to Hadoop is great because now you can have a pile of data, move some compute to the data. Mm -hmm. In that example, storage is the value, right? So, because you're moving compute, you got to store it in storage, and you access it, pulls it out. When you talk about real time streaming, mm -hmm. there's no value in storage, the value's in real time, so that means you're in a flow model. So now you're in kind of like flow theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you guys look at that? Because that's where we see the innovation happening. Is that being talked about at the show here? Are people talking about specific technology that's saying, okay, I got it on disk, disk is covered. Certainly in flash mm -hmm. and stuff helps that with Spark, I get that. But we're talking about real time, mm -hmm. people on the table, patients, scientific research where you have massive amounts of processing going on from time series to holistic data modeling. Mm -hmm. The machines churning this out. What, 
What is that new technology at that level? What do you see? Is there anything out there? I mean, is this kind of like the, is this too early to talk about this? Well, I think that a lot of innovation that's take, taken place in big data companies, like Facebook and Twitter, is, is like enabling the research community and, and the medical community to do great things. And I think that's a fantastic transfer of ideas and, and technology. Yeah. And, and you guys, like EMC, yeah. what you guys are doing. Um, so that, that you can draw parallels, absolute parallels with the use yeah. case. A Twitter feed or you know, a stream from you know, your, your heartbeat, all your monitors, same kind of data. Um, and the potential is enormous for what can be yeah. done with that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think uh, you know, we, we talk a lot uh, to all of our customers, and I mean, you, guys, you guys are right in this boat too. Hadoop gets you so far, right? It, and it is very good for what it does, but okay, now I need to do real, real time. Now I need to do stream analysis. Mm -hmm. Now not only do I need to do stream analysis, I need to actually real time insert other values into that stream and then do an analysis and then output and translate that into the result. And I need microse microsecond level latency. Right? I'm not doing that on disk. It just doesn't work that way. Right? Yeah. Spark is a great bridge. We've got other open source projects like a Flink that's coming right along behind that. You know, and and it's, it, this is, this is the, the standard of this industry, right? This will kill this, which killed this, which killed this other thing. And, and that's just progress, I mean, that's how it works. But I think what also people are realizing, and in fact, I, I saw it in the, the report you guys reached, uh, released it yesterday morning, the, the top two cloud providers for analytics, right? You guys put out the who's, who's doing what in the cloud. Yeah. And uh, I, I actually posed this question to a bunch of our internal guys uh, that morning, and I said, who's the number one? And of course, everybody, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. No, the number, the number, the co-number ones are actually Google and Microsoft. And I dug a little deeper into that, and you know, in the Microsoft side especially, what, what are you using to do your data analytics? SQL, overwhelmingly. Yeah, clearly right? this show validates 100% SQL full on Hadoop is at the blazing speeds yeah. is the lingua is the franca. Defacto. Might not be yeah. the only one, but it is now it's standard. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's de facto right. standard, exactly. whatever you want to call it. And and having that ecosystem of tools beyond Hadoop that give you the real time tie-ins, multi you know MPP multi processing parallel processing databases, all of that technology needs to work together, needs to fit. And I think that's really what I'm seeing at the show is that people are, are really pushing the boundary of what Hadoop can do just because of its technology. So let's take, let's, take, let's, so, let's, 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 let's yeah. jump into that. So if you believe that um, SQL and Hadoop works, we also got yep. validation that columnar stores, or columnar stores are valid. Cloudera throws it into their mm -hmm. uh, could-do announcement, which seems to be kind of like, just to kind of save between HBase and some other stuff, mm -hmm. but Vertica's been around for a while. We've Vertica's seen the success with HP yeah. Vertica. Yeah. Um, SQL on Hadoop, mm -hmm. you got to, the table stakes seem to be, you got to have those two things right. to do large, fast scale. Right. Right. Okay, but that's just one element. Right. Now if you look around that, now you have diversity around use cases. Right. I need cloud, right. you know, I need on demand. You know, exactly. This, yeah. is now, this is now the new normal. So, that's not a startup game. That's going to be hard for a cloud era or someone to do because, mm -hmm. you know, it's just that's a lot to bite off in with all the value that's on the table. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I guess I'm just kind of you know well, that, riffing I mean, on this, but yeah. the, the diversity of use cases is what we see in research all the time. So you, whether it's some so a researcher needs Mongo or they need Spark or they need you know Hadoop or they yeah. need Hook, yeah. and that's really where the FBDL, the Federation Business Data Lake, is, is fantastic because I can carve out a different environment. Um, and it's, it's isolated, segregated, but it's also utilizing the same data layer underneath. And I can provide you a custom environment to do your analytics, and that's really flexible. Yeah. It gives me a lot of flexibility. Yeah. It gives peace of mind around security. Um, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's well, great. let's take a step back. I want you guys to comment as experts because they okay, take your hats off for you know partners in EMC because you both work for stakeholders. You mm -hmm. know, you both have to serve up to the business owners who want value. Mm -hmm. So they're confused. So if I'm a CIO and I'm looking at our CXO and I'm looking out over the Hadoop landscape this week, I'm just as confused now than ever before. Mm -hmm. I've been vendor hopping for the past few, few years, poking and trying. Now I've got to write a check and I need to have a team in place to do this. Mm -hmm. So like, I need to move now. Mm -hmm. So how do you guys talk to that stakeholder and 
what is available today and what is some best practices and you yeah. can just clear that up because that seems to be the number one confusing thing we hear. Yeah, I, I, from our side, I think that question's probably a little easier than it is from John's side. He has to defend <laughs> a technology decision up. For us, it's more about, this is an ecosystem, right? It's not a thing, you don't buy it. You don't buy a data lake, you buy parts that make up mm -hmm. a data lake. And, and we've taken the, the engineering effort and time to stitch those together to, to solve some of these multi-use case uh, functionalities. But the key for us when we think about what's, what's the tool, what's the piece, what's the, I don't know. There's two guys in a garage right now writing the next big thing. That, that, that is happening right now, right? So I can't build you a platform that restricts you from innovating down the road because I made a technology decision today, right? right? And that's really what EMC is focused on with our solution set is we're working with the best of breed. So we, we obviously we have the Pivotal Big Data Suite, Partners is a, is a customer of that. From a technology perspective, genuinely taking my EMC Federation guy hat off, I, I think they have the most comprehensive suite of tools that enable all of that technology yeah. built around that Hadoop ecosystem. But, Cloudera, Hortonworks, there are other tools out there well, that are doing the same thing. there's market things you could use. Absolutely. But, it, but this, this comes back down to my whole point, which is, if it's an outcome generating conversation, exactly. you don't really have to get dogma, have a lot of dogma around one no. vendor or the other. You can say, hey, I got EMC, they're a great partner on storage, and I'm going to use XYZ over here, and although EMC has something, maybe I'll use this or that. Yes. So the customer ultimately Absolutely. is architecting. It's like hybrid cloud. Exactly. It's not a product, it's an engineering it's an outcome, engineering right? So, yeah. so cloud's easy. You've got public, private and on-prem, and hybrid. So yeah. you got at least some swim lanes in yes. cloud, right? Mm -hmm. And Amazon's help there. Yep. And for Is us, there swim lanes in big yeah, data? Yeah, so I mean, for us, we're looking at the fabric, mm -hmm. the applications, and then the infrastructure and plumbing, right? Those are, the, those are kind of your swim lanes. The data fabric, that's genuinely, and you know this, it's the Wild West, right? There's a million yeah. tools to do those things. Really what it's about is, those are just parts. I need to know what I want to do with it, right? And when we talked to John, it was, what do you want to do? I have a research organization. They use a bunch of different tools because this guy likes Mongo and this guy likes Hadoop and this guy likes graph databases. And but John, okay. so you're, let's go to John. Yeah. So let me ask you the question directly then with, based on that. Your job is to deliver the outcome and engineer and architecture and have a team working on some stuff. The last thing you want to do is get foreclosed to a future benefit. So you have to think, okay, I got to deliver today, but I don't want to put myself into a bad situation, but I have to unwind it. So given that's the scenario, I, I'm sure you'd agree that's a mindset, right? That's the mindset. What yeah. do you do? I mean, what are you doing right now? I mean, the fact, because with the fabric kind of up in the air, you got to say, okay, I want to have flexibility. Mm -hmm. So let's get back, we're back to that. So what's your, what's your answer to the CXO saying, hey John, I want, I want best in class, high performance solution today, Price somewhat okay, I can maybe go up in price, maybe pay a little mm -hmm. more, but I don't want to get locked out of the downstream benefit. Absolutely. I want, I want large scale, real time, save lives, do our great research. Um, what, what's your architecture? <laughs> so the nice part about the research IT is we're sitting in between the clinical IT and the research folks. And our, our mentality is somewhere in the middle. So the research folks are super agile, always trying new things. Clinical IT, you know, it's more conservative, have to pick you know, a solid mm -hmm. platform. Um, we have the freedom to, to do POCs, to try things out, and to take ideas from the research community. And that's somewhat what we do, but also take that enterprise mindset. And so we, we need a supportable platform. You know, we need a platform that will scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have partners with EMC on, on the architecture side, and, um, and that's kind of really what we're doing. We have these use cases that come to us, and we're running POCs, and we'll figure out how it works. And if it works, then we'll scale out that model. But always, you know, with the so mindset. So you just shorten your mile posts in terms of your milestones. Yeah. You got to no. take it piece by piece. Take it piece by piece. We, yeah, prove, out, prove it out at the small scale um, before we, and mm. then prove the value and then roll it out as a service to the whole community. So price um, probably isn't a big issue for you guys. I mean, I mean, partners are not saying you're going to just write, you know, drunken sailor check type checks to the vendors, <laughs> but for the most part, your risk is mostly on the deployment, archit architecture deployment, less on price sensitivity. That, 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 that. Most vendors, I mean, most yeah. customers that have risks, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the long-term supportability is, is key um, to be able to roll out that service. So um, how are you guys doing on POCs now, just kind of in general? Are you moved out of POCs? Are you in production with big data? Is it mindset-wise working? How are the teams, give us a taste of some of the dynamics involved in 
being on the front lines like you are. So again, Parliament is a huge organization, 50,000 people. There's the big data taking place all over. But in the research space, we're in, the, we're in POCs. So like I say, we have these great ideas, bringing together medical records, genomics, um, all of the research data sets that are out there. Um, and we're running POCs in, in, in several different, different verticals. And, um, and they're all really exciting. And we so have a whole, e yeah. What is EMC doing for you guys? Because obviously they have analytics, they have Pivotal, they have EMC. What are some of the things that you guys share uh, what you're working on together. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so um, EMC have been great partners. Um, they, they, they come along with me to meet the researchers and we architect out something with, your, with EMC consultants. Um, what are we working on? Specifically, cancer genomes, um, DNA, mm -hmm. um, medical records, and, and like I say, all, of, all the data sources that go with that. Um, we're working on, um, so on, on the kind of the more business side, sort of l taking the medical records, can we predict trends? Can we identify what's taking place now? Sort of in, in, in patterns. Is it a service catalog? Is it an application? I mean, oh, is so it analytics? We're on. Yeah, so uh, the, service, the service catalog is storage, compute, and data services. Um, they just, uh, and, and, and we're putting to get that together on, mm -hmm. the, on the business data lake platform. So that the researcher or you know, the end user can come along, we're aiming for self-service, self-provisioning. You can request you know, your storage, your compute, your analytics platform that you need, and data services, you know, whatever data set that is that we have, we want to be able to provide that to you via that portal. And that's, 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 the, that's the vision that we're heading for. Uh, EMC shares our vision with us really, and so it's been great working with them. Chris, any color on that? Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, you know, partners represented for us from a solution set, um, kind of the, the ideal customer, right? They, they had the same vision that we do, which is, um, and, and it kind of ties into your earlier question about sort of the trends at the show. One of the things that, that we're focused on is how do you consume analytics even for a non-data scientist, right? And a lot of our customers, uh, Partners is, is kind of an anomaly in that space. You, you've got a ton of data scientists. Most of our customers might have one or two business intelligence guys or, or database type guys, right? So yeah, scale that operation scale up. Scale that operation up. And, and really it's about being able to consume data science without a data scientist. And so our data and analytics catalog that's built on top of the platform is that consumption model and it just it just tied in really nicely with the vision that John laid out for partners. So, yeah. so John, I got to ask you a final question. What is um, your take and summary of Big Data NYC this year? This whole week is all about big data. You got our event going on, Estrada and Hadoop. What's your takeaway? I mean, what's the aroma? What's the vibe? Where's the state of the industry? Just what's your what's your quick take on what's the summary this year? What would, how would you log this into the into the into the file in terms of the what's happened? Um. I think there's great things going on around Spark, for sure. Um, it was very exciting this morning to hear the emphasis on precision medicine right mm -hmm. up at the national government level. I thought it was fantastic, and that's what Partners is doing and committed to. Um, and security, last year was security was a big piece. Like what was mm -hmm. taking place around security mm -hmm. was, yeah. was gonna, is really going to enable us to do, to do what we need to do. Um, the conference is just getting going, so I'm excited to find out what's going to happen, what's going to happen in the next couple of days. Chris, what's your take this year finalized? Big Data NYC, uh, what's your take this year in terms of what's, what's happened? What's the walk away message? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think this is the year that, uh, that Big Data turns the corner, stops being something that people talk about, starts being something that people do. Um, and we've, we've really seen a huge uh, uptick in adoption. And I think the big takeaway from the show, I, I, I agree with, uh, with what John said. It's, People are, are, it's about beyond to do, right? We are, that's the platform, we got it. Now let's take that to the next level. So I'm really excited to see the development that's going on. That's awesome. Yeah. As Jimmy Fallon would say, it's huge. <laughs> that's Donald Trump actually. That's, but that was a good yeah. skit. Anyway, thanks guys, thanks Thank for coming on. Yeah. Really appreciate taking the time, sharing your insights. Yeah. Uh, EMC and Partners Healthcare here outside the Cube, sharing the future of healthcare, big data and technologies. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>